My lords, ladies and gentlemen, very warm welcome back to Transport Fever 2 and episode 4 of the United States themed playthrough on the Deluxe DLC. Between episode 3 and this one, I've gone through and made a few more changes to our network. The biggest change being I have added some more trains onto the uh, the run from the Chandler Stone Quarry through to the Haywood Brickworks and then here into the city of New... I've forgotten the name of this city. New Haven, there we go. Uh, I think we've got now six trains running on that line, making us a nice amount of money apiece and making sure that the, the income is a lot more steady and a lot more consistent. There goes one of our trains now, actually, loaded up with the stone, passing straight through the New Haven station. I've also added this bridge here that we're currently perched upon, and over in the top left you can see there's another similar bridge on the other side of the city of New Haven as well. And the aim there is to encourage them to branch outwards over the bridges if they will and start building on both sides of our train lines. For today's episode what I'd like to do is get our first passenger line up and running. We have a city nearby of Haywood and I think I'd like to link up a passenger line between the two cities and New, I'm sorry, Haywood. The city uh, starts out requiring both tools and bricks or construction materials if you will. So I think we'll get those two being delivered as well, or we'll make a start on making sure we can get both of those two brought in as well to get Haywood that initial growth. So let's bring up the user interface. As we can see, we've got 20 million in the bank, and I have now changed the currency symbol to dollars to make it more fitting with the series. And here's the state of affairs. Here's the extra road that now just loops around our entire rail network with our train lines just poking out either side of the bridge ready for where we want to take them and we also have a little bus loop in New Haven as well and that's in preparation for having passengers coming in and out of this train station as we can see New Haven now requires the additional two cargo units that's goods and machinery we won't be in a place to deliver those for a little while but that's the four that New Haven will need from now until the end of the game each city we set it so it requires a maximum of four so we know which four we're bringing into New Haven and if we scroll out we can see here's Haywood up here so it's not going to be too long of a journey for our passenger line and as I mentioned tools and bricks are the two starting goods that Haywood requires and bricks we've got readily accessible right here and tools we can maybe just rework this line down here and get some of these tools picked up from here ship them through into Haywood so let's make a start and so the first thing we're going to need is a train station up here in Haywood so let's go ahead and build it and we'll make it a passenger station but we'll increase it to also include the, the cargo lines as well of course and we'll pop that just there that will do quite nicely just rename that so it's just pure Haywood rather than Haywood sidings and let's just do some slight changes to this station we'll add a second and a third passenger platform so that's one two and three passenger platforms available we can also add a couple of tracks down here for some short services if we want to and then we want to look at having some cargo platforms so I'm going to leave a gap this time between our passenger platforms and our cargo platforms so that little track node there we will remove it once we're finished but it just keeps them separated nicely and we'll just go with that for the time being and yeah like I said we'll remove that middle stretch there 
that still all classes as one building thankfully even though it does have this gap between the two but it just keeps them separated right so if we want to bring in some passengers we need to run a line from one of these platforms over to here bearing in mind of course you also want to connect into this cargo line here so we can start the the shipment of the bricks into Haywood and that would just be a dedicated line from here to here nothing too fancy so it would only be a short haul train but for now let's focus on getting these passengers dropped off and brought in and we may as well use platform number one it's the first one available to us and we'll keep this nice and straight in terms of its gradient as we leave the station and how do we want to well I suppose we may as well just go for a pretty straight run between the two there's no point making it any more complex or convoluted than it absolutely has to be so just a nice straight connection with a little curve in as we approach the station will work quite nicely so which platform do we want to use in New Haven I think we'll use this one here this is the first passenger platform we have available so it's this line here so it's this one just here we want to be connecting into so let's come from here there's our line to Haywood and we can just connect that in nice and simple like that one thing I'm going to do here is just put a little a little uh, junction or a little crossing point just there that way our train from Haywood it can now access any of the passenger platforms and likewise any of the passenger platforms can as they're departing make their way to Haywood so we've got plenty of scope for all just moving things about a little bit later and reassigning them to different platforms if we feel that we need to and then as we get up towards Haywood we'll do something similar with our passenger platforms we'll just make it so that in the future if we need to swap them around we're able to do so without any difficulty what do we have here the American stagecoach is our first new road vehicle for passengers so we might want to upgrade our buses such as they are that we have in New Haven and we've also got a couple of extra trains as well as we can see all variants of the American 440 we have the Eureka and the Virginia we also have a passenger car and that's our lot there we go so yes now we can use any of these four sorry any of these three platforms here and it's just simple nothing too complicated in how they're all merging together they're just merging one at a time and what we'll do is perhaps put two passing loops in at various places along this line here so we can have multiple trains running this running this line if we feel it's necessary so we'll put a passing loop round about maybe just a little bit further maybe to about there and we'll get that to connect back in like that and we'll put one more just at after this level crossing here maybe a bit longer than that say about two there like that so let's put our one-way signals in here so our trains are going the right direction on these passing loops so we want one there and we want one there and then same again on this passing loop we'll have one there and then down at the far side we'll have one there okay that's that done and dusted I think what we'll also do here is we'll give these trains a separate train depot so if we put our depot where do we want to put it maybe about here whoops <laughs> not there and then what we want to do is take a line connect it in make sure it's got a decent connection and it has and we may as well do one going in the opposite direction as well like that 
and again to make sure it's got a decent connection it has and then we'll give these one-way signals there and there so that we can just marshal and police the trains as they join our line okay so the next thing we want to do then is set up this passenger line our first passenger line of the series and we're coming from New Haven and it's a simple point-to-point -point connection straight into Haywood color scheme let's go for let's go for blue for this one and this will be RP and this is just nice and simple New Haven and Haywood I think of the, the town name there New Haven Haywood perfect right so let's buy the train so buy vehicles so as we said we've got these two new American 440 variants the Eureka 440 and the Virginia and Truckee 440 and which train do you want to use well we may as well use one of these new ones what's our oh we can do 50 miles per hour with our passenger car uh, passenger wagon so let's go for the Virginia and Truckee because that does have a top speed of 50 miles per hour so we want one Virginia and Truckee and a couple of passenger and clear story carriages maybe maybe just three to start with while we get the the line up and running and we'll buy two of those so that's 7.4 million let's assign them onto that new passenger line we've just created over here in Haywood we may as well put up a simple bus system like we have in New Haven as well so if we put a stop right outside the station we'll put one around there we'll then put one up there and this little road connection here we should just finish this off for them like that and then what we can do is we can use that newly constructed road to run down here stop there and maybe there as well simple loop nothing too fancy let's set this up so just loop around the entire city such as it is of Haywood like that wonderful and this will be the Haywood line 01 orange color no let's go for red and it contrasts with the blue quite nicely I think so let's get ourselves a road depot for Haywood and let's pop that let's pop it just here so we should have those new stagecoaches available and we can compare them to the horse-drawn carriage one mile per hour faster, one kilowatt more power, and one extra capacity. So let's go ahead and get those, and I think just three will be more than enough. We want them coloured red, and again it looks like it's colouring the horse, but it isn't, thankfully. And then if we go down to New Haven, we can also swap out and upgrade these buses down here. If we can just find one, there's one there, manage vehicle. As you can see we have three down here. And we want them to use the American Stagecoach now. There we go. Just to increase that capacity and slightly, ever so slightly, increase that passenger throughput as well due to the extra power and speed. Okay, so while these are all settling in and getting used to what's what, just going to run the train smoothing tool along the side of our track just to take away any sharpness and steepness that may have been generated when we constructed this track and just to make it blend in a little more naturally like that nice and easy and it just tidies it all up makes it look a little bit more pleasant okay so we've already got pick up on our bus stations in New Haven sorry in Haywood no passengers yet on our passenger line but hopefully they will be uh, coming in the not too distant future the other thing I want to do before I forget is here at the station in New Haywood New Haywood, just Haywood 
is just add in a couple of these underpasses for the passengers. You know, we may as well go four across the doors like that. And of course, add in the station platform roofs as well, just so they're not getting wet when they're waiting in this dry desert. Okay, so that's the passenger line set up and running. The other thing we might want to start doing, like I said, is at least bringing in some of these bricks here because it's a very, very straightforward connection to achieve that. So if we were to use this line here, and let's pull that out nice and straight. Is that, oh no, that's a little bit too close there, look, isn't it? Just started to touch into the passenger line a little bit too much. Hmm, no, that's too wiggly, we don't want it to do that. So what we'll do is we'll run out straight and true first of all, like that, and then slowly bring it in over a little bit straighter, like where are we headed actually? In fact, what we probably want to do is come into this passenger line, like that, and then take it almost immediately off in its own separate direction, going their separate ways almost straight away. And we want to have this come over and we can do this at 75 miles an hour throughout as we can see because we have plenty of space to curve the track in. In fact, we could probably put more curvature on that without any impact on the speed. And we may as well have it ooh, slow down a bit there. 58 miles per hour. Well, yeah, that's fine. And we'll bring that in like that. Okay. Given that we're probably going to want to use at least two trains bringing in the bricks to Haywood. We may as well give them a passing loop as well. And if we have a slow speed or the slowest speed, the lowest speed of 50, then we've got a decent speed for our trains at the merge points. There we go, 54. Perfect. And then once again, just take in the edge of the, uh, the slope there just to blend it a little nicer and down here as well okay signals then so we want a one-way signal just there and we want one down here as well wonderful right then so now what we can do is check the reach of this and it does cover some of these industrial buildings, so we can get the train set up straight away without the need for any uh, final delivery trucks because there is at least some demand for the bricks already. And in fact, that may even be all of them. No, it's not. There's a couple of stragglers over here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, not too many, but there are a couple that we're not quite hitting, but we are hitting enough of them to make the train actually have a demand to load with bricks. So let's head over here. Do we want them to share a platform? Well, we could do, and we'll just tell the, the delivery line to Haywood to not bother waiting for a full load, and that should work. So let's go from Haywood Brickworks to Haywood Cargo Station like that. This will be red because they're shipping or transporting bricks. So you load if available and do this just as a matter of course, have you load bricks. And let's just rename this line. So this is RC, that's rail cargo. And this is bricks. And this is just simply New Haven. Okay, let's buy a train for that, shall we? We may as well use this depot, it does have access. It can come down here into the station before leaving to the brickworks. 
So, locomotives then. What was you on the Eureka? Should we go for the Eureka for this one, just to mix it up and have a few different variants of trains on the on the lines? I think we shall. And we don't need to double head this one because it's not going to be a very big train, is it? It's not going long distance at all. Maybe six long. That's a capacity of 42. And if we have two of those, that takes us to 84 per train. And I dare say they're going to make at least one delivery per year. They're not going that far. So that should be enough to keep Haywood initially uh, meeting its demands. Let's do that. Five million. We'll not colour them and put them on that line. Okay, so that's that done. So the tools. Well, we have tools down here. I just don't know if this is being well enough supplied to meet the demands for two cities. I think it probably is. And if it's not, we can always just adjust the trains. As it stands, could we get from here to Haywood? Well, we'd come down here, we'd come this way, of course. Here, and then we'd come around here. You can get on to any of those platforms because at this point they can decide to take this line or this line. So all three of these platforms are available to you. So you pass through on one of these and well, you don't quite make it, do you? You're close. We're about 80% of the way there. But we just need to give them a way to get from here over to here. Now, let's think. Do we want to come in and share the passenger line? Maybe not. Although we'll probably have to share down here before it diverges into the cargo uh, cargo section of our station. But we'll certainly need something like that to open up the second platform. And I dare say we might, if we can, no, it's probably going to be too tight. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, what we can do is do no we can't do this because that switch oh yes we can and we can get it 50 miles per hour okay so if we have a merge point here what we can do is we can run our cargo trains down this line here and around and all the way down. Before we depart and head over, say, there. And yeah, I think then that will work. We'll want a couple of pattern loops on this point. So what we'll do is we'll give them one here we can't do it just there and again make sure we get at least 50 miles per hour on this and then bring that in like that let's just give them signals here and this gives them a places uh, gives them a place to wait fairly close to the station should the platform be occupied by uh, one of these trains here dropping off bricks into New Haven you see and then down here oh we don't even have that connected that would not have gone well but yes down here what we can then do is do the same again give him a stopping place that's fairly close to the junction that way if the platforms and everything are occupied they can wait at least reasonably nearby a bit faster than that please that's a bit too slow let's go from down there there we go so let's put a signal there and there
And let's, no, hmm. Yeah, let's put a two-way signal here and here. That shouldn't cause deadlock. No, it shouldn't. And da, da, da. yeah, do we want then another passing loop for the cargo trains down here? Probably yes, we do. What are you waiting on there, my friend? So you're waiting. Okay. So I'm thinking then. Just here, I've got distracted here, but I'm thinking we'll put a midpoint block there as well just so that frees this train up a little bit faster and we probably want to put a midpoint block here as well then in case it happens on the return journey like that anyway back to the bricks so do we want to put another passing loop somewhere down here i think we probably do so let's give this 50 miles per hour here bring you out and get you in there and as we've just seen that little interaction of the passenger train there we might want to consider a midpoint block down here some in fact no because we don't know how long these trains are going to be our passenger trains are quite short so we know we can get away with that midpoint block so you've not brought anything back with you yet. Have you? No. Let's just see what happens here. You should load up. Ah, yes, there we go. Just slow that down again. Okay, so that is working correctly. They're not taking a full load, but that's okay. Right, so I think then at this point, we should be able to put in... And I think we might just go for one train initially, just so we see how it how it performs. Let's use that blue. And we want you to come all the way down here. So you've chosen the correct or the next available platform at Haywood. You're coming down here. That's all fine. It doesn't really matter which platform they choose to pass through on down here, but they've chosen the brick one. Again, that's fine. And then, yep, coming back, you do what you're supposed to be doing, and there's not much else you can do down there anyway. Perfect. So again, just to make sure, let's just tell them only to load tools at Bellevue. We'll have them load if available, like we have with the bricks up in Haywood. And we'll call this tools, and this is Bellevue. Bellevue. Is it VU like that? No, it is an E. It's right there on the screen if you look on the tool factory label. So we have Bellevue to Haywood. Wonderful. Right, so we can now get a train for this one. And we have a depot right here, so we drop in and you make utilization of it. Uh, what do you want to use for this one? Um, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, I'm going to go for a Baldwin 280. And again, it's not going to be over big. At least initially. Maybe again just six carriages. Yeah, that's fine. And say two of them again. Yeah, four and a half million. I'm not really in this series anyway. I'm not going to be making much or being I'm not really overly concerned about our fulfillment rates in our cities. As long as we're giving them something and it's enough to get them by, that's enough. Because my plan is, uh, this is longer term now for this series, but because we have a large map and we have our cities spread out, I'm thinking of having a few major cities of course, and then just keeping some of the cities a little bit uh, smaller in terms of their size, and the major cities will have uh, large interchanges for the passengers so for example Clearwater would be a great example here because it's surrounded by towns not too far away so Clearwater would be the hub and that's where all the the express lines and the intercity lines would come in and then from Clearwater we'd have little local lines to all the 
outlying cities and Clearwater we would try and get them as well supplied as possible to encourage that growth but Chandler, Carrollton, Athens, Green Bay and Rockford and maybe even West Jordan we'd probably stymie their growth by just limiting the amount of goods that we're bringing into them just to keep them a little bit smaller so we have that large city and uh, small to medium sized town dis uh, difference and it's just fitting quite nicely I think so that's the plan I've not made a full determination as to which ones uh, will be which I, I just picked on clear water there it might not be clear water that was just an example because it was right in front of me but yeah something like that I think will be something a little bit different and hopefully will work quite nicely but that's where we're going to leave it for today's episode let's pick a train to take a cab ride on shall we and I'm thinking what we'll do is I'll pause in fact let's get to 1877 we'll see what's what in terms of any potential unlocks and yeah no unlocks and now we'll pause the calendar we'll allow this train to get over to Haywood and then we'll take a ride from Haywood to the Bellevue Tools factory and that will serve as our outro for today's episode so what I'll do I'll put a cut in at this point speed the game up and we'll hop on board just as this train is about to depart Haywood okay then ladies and gentlemen here we go we're just heading for Bellevue now just leaving the the uh, mix mode station of Haywood behind us you may have noticed or in fact you may have not have noticed because I probably put the cut in too quickly but at the junction by New Haven we have quite a bit of traffic waiting around for the tracks to clear I did think about maybe changing that however I quite like that like I said I'm not going for full efficiency we are on easy mode this series so if the trains are held up a little from time to time then that's fine I mean we can see a perfect example here we're waiting for the bricks train ahead to free up the block but you know that happens in reality doesn't it trains do have to wait for one another so I think we'll keep it like this if it gets too ridiculous and we have total uh, deadlock and nothing's moving anywhere then obviously we'll have to make adjustments but I, I'm not going for a playthrough where every train is completely free-flowing without any sort of hold-ups at signals so I thought I'd make that uh, just mention that here as we uh, depart and get caught up at some block issues well not issues but some block management if you will well I hope you've enjoyed this episode anyway ladies and gentlemen your comments feedback and suggestions so far for this series has been fantastic and please do keep that coming it uh, does give me a lot to think about and there's some really good ideas in there one of which uh, I've been discussing with the commenter and it's something that we may be looking to do for this series but yeah if you do have any any other suggestions uh, any feedback you'd like to leave then please let me know and as always if you'd like to name a train or name a city name a station name a line anything like that then let me know in the comments down below and we'll make that happen for you as well but for now ladies and gentlemen all that remains for me to say is as always take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now <laughs>